code is, and you can identify that. And it'll say this is like in a completely different directory, so don't worry about it. Did you say GDB where or where? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It was just where. So you first type run to run the program. Yes, yeah, start from the beginning. It generates a, a signal, and then you, you type where to, um, to see where it is. I'm not going to spend any more time in GDB, because like you can do everything you can do in a debugger in GDB. You can set breakpoints. You can look at files. But like, I mean, come on. It's kind of ridiculous. So there is like a graphical debugger called DDD. And you start it off with exactly the same. Oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, you start it off with exactly the same. Uh, the same uh, syntax. You just type DDD and then the name of the executable. And then hopefully it'll pop up a little window. And now you have like a nice graphical thing where you can see your program and you can scroll up and you can even turn on line numbers. Which, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to turn on line numbers real quick. Okay. Um, so here's my program. And if you guys are familiar with debuggers, DDD allows you to do all the normal things you can do with debuggers. So for example, you can set a breakpoint. So if I run the program, now it'll stop when it gets to that line. Oh no, it won't, because I have this error thing in here. Um, but again, if I type where, it'll tell me where it is. So you might notice that the first thing is that the DDD window appears to be divided into two sections. This top one is the source code. So you can, you can use this to navigate around your code. And the bottom one is actually just GDB. So anything you can type in GDB, you can also type in here. And a lot of other debuggers are going to have the same type of system. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I'm going to um, remove the error function. And I'm going to recompile this. OK. And so we, we're going we're gonna to start this up. And now it'll actually run. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stop it right before the program quits uh, by putting a breakpoint here. And I did that by just right-clicking and saying, here, I'll do it on a different line, right-clicking and doing set breakpoint. OK? So now we can do that, and we can run it. Now it's going to run slower because there's no optimization and it's running in the debugger. But you know it's not that slow, you can see. Um, OK, so it, it just says that it stopped here at test.cpp line 61. And then like, you can mouse over variables like tr, which is not a number, apparently. For some reason, I must have a bug or something. Yeah, I don't know. OK, well, I don't know. I must have, I must have screwed up how I wrote that trace function. Um, oh, I didn't return. OK, there. I just found my bug. OK? <laughs> I didn't return TR. So, um, so that's it. So DDD is also cool. It stands for Data Display Debugger. Because what you can do is you can like double click on variables. And it makes a little box up here. And that box represents the variable. Um, right now, this isn't that interesting. When we go to the Cooper example, you'll see that this is more interesting. Um, yes? So if you find a bug in your code, can you change it in this interface? No. Or, okay. You can't. Um, so it, it, it reads, this, like when you put in minus G, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure, does it compile this, like a copy of the source code into the executable, or does it go to the files and load them back up again? It creates entries within the, uh, the executable so that you can find everything later. If you, you can try and run the debugger on an executable that does not have any dash G, which you yeah. can't find anything because there's no information contained okay. in your executable anymore. Okay. So when it tells you what line number that's written into your executable now. Right. Okay. So um, I think it, it displays your actual source, like an actual text file somewhere else. Okay. So if I changed it and I ran it again, it would show the updated one. Sometimes. All right. Well, I don't know. Okay. When I use it, I change the if you change the source without recompiling. It's obviously going to be out of sync again. Right. Sometimes, so don't do that. Sometimes it'll be smart and say, hey, this file is not in sync. Yeah. What did you do? Stop it. So, a kind of like error that I used to make a lot is to like change the code and then not recompile it and accidentally run it again, find the same bug, run it in a debugger, 
find that I have to debug the same thing because I didn't I didn't recompile it. So make sure you recompile before you well, do it. When I do GDB yeah. um, from the command line, I don't give it the executable. Okay. But you give it inside the program, and then I find that I don't have to restart. I can recompile it and okay. tell it to reload the, the executable at that point. Okay. Um, so but that's just a little overhead. Yeah, in here Oops. there are options under the run command where you can say what executable you want, I think. And you can also give the command line options. Yeah. Right, so if you have command line options and you go to run, then it'll put them right here. You can put them in here. So I'm going to do that right now with the Cooper example. Um, you can use DDD with, uh, all right, later, Eric. Um, you can use DDD with, um, you can use it with Fortran, but I've noticed some problems that creep up. Matt, didn't you have problems? Yeah. I don't remember what, I can Mostly worked, but didn't always, and so I ended up using it. Yeah. So we could go back to this Fortran program and run it again, and uh, and do a little a little test real quick. Um, again, minus g minus o zero uh, dot slash test dot f ninety, and uh, I'm just going to start it up like this, and so we're going to go here, and you can like put a breakpoint. Say here, oh no, you can't set a breakpoint. I'm going to set a breakpoint here. Run. So one thing I want to point out is if you're familiar with Fortran and you have modules, if you don't list the variables, like if you you know you can just delete everything after this comma, and it'll import everything from the module. It won't work. Like you won't be able to look at the variables. So right now I can type print print a. It's going to print a huge thing because it's 10,000 by 10,000. But like, um, but if I had not put everything after the comma, it'd be like, I don't know what anything is here. And Intel debugger actually does the same thing, which, which I thought was interesting. So that's a, uh, so, so this is a reason to always list the variables you're using. Okay, okay, okay I got you, but sometimes you have to, uh, to import about thousands of variables, are you going to put them all? Well, okay. that's your choice. So. you want someone else's code and they didn't have any of that stuff in there. Right. Then you can't look at these. Right. So, I mean, you know, unfortunately, this is where I said where I think, like, I don't know if the it, like Visual Fortran and their debugger does it, but I, I would bet it probably works better. Um, so I'm going to do here real quick, and I hope that this actually works, is I'm going to put a, I'm going to, Run this again, and now it's going to stop here in this loop. Now let's say I have a bug only when i is 500 and j is 200. Okay, so I've got a problem, and I only have a bug in this one condition. So I want to like go through this loop over and over and over until i and j. So right now i is equal to. So I can use this little display thing. I'm going to double click the variables. Oops. And unfortunately, it actually puts them on top of each other, which is kind of annoying, but... So I'll put that there. So right now, I and J are 1. Every time I click Continue, which is this button, it'll run until it hits another breakpoint. So I'm going to hit it again, and you can see it slowly increments. So I just have to click this 20,000 times, and I'll get there. <laughs> okay, so what you can do is you can right-click this little stop and click Properties, and you can put a condition in here to stop it when a certain condition happens. And the syntax, if it's C or C++, it's just like what you would write in an if statement. So you could write like I equals equals 10 J and, so double ampersand in C and C++, J equals equals 20. In Fortran, I believe it's I, uh, dot, I think you have to actually type out dot EQ, 10 and j dot eq 20 and it doesn't understand equals equals here you can tell it how many times to ignore so if it's like a while loop there might not just be some number you can check for so you might say like or if there's some function that gets called 10 times and the sixth time it gets called there's a bug you can put a breakpoint and then put in an ignore count of six and it'll stop on the sixth time okay so this is a this is a super duper useful thing I'm going to hit, hit apply. Okay, so that actually worked. Now if I hit continue, 